Hello, chemistry folks. In the world of chemistry, there is a phrase known as like dissolves like. This is very commonly heard, and it deals with the fact that there are nonpolar substances that will dissolve with other nonpolar substances, and there are polar substances that will dissolve with other polar substances. As a side note, ionic things, yeah, they're super polar. They're made out of positive and negatively charged ions. What we can also take from this is that nonpolar and polar things do not mix. So let's take a look at some nonpolar substances. These are all nonpolar substances. Substances I find in my house. I've got some canola oil, I've got some peanut oil, and I've got some olive oil. I can take all three of these oils, put them into a jar, mix them around, and guess what? Like dissolves like. They're all dissolving with each other. There's no layers formed at all. Next, I can take vinegar, which is on the left in a polar substance, and water, which is on the right in another polar substance, and try to mix them together. I'll put a little food color in the water so we can actually see if they mix together or not. Then as I add them together, we'll see that they totally mix. No layers. I'll also add some salt, salt ionic. So that's very polar. The salt totally dissolves and we can't see it left in the jar anymore. Like dissolves like. Next, I'll take my non-polar solution of my three oils mixed together and I'll add some salt. Salt is ionic or very polar. I'm trying to take non-polar and polar and put them together. As you look at the bottom of the jar, salt's still there. The salt has not dissolved. Non-polar and polar do not dissolve each other. Next, I have my three oil solution with salt in it on the left, and on the right I have my water and vinegar solution. I'm going to take the water and vinegar solution and pour it into the oil. Pause your video now and make a prediction as to what you think will take place. As we pour, we see that the vinegar and water solution actually goes right past the oil to the bottom. The polar liquids are actually more dense than the non-polar oils that remain on top. There's a very clear line between the two as they are not mixing. So now let's go ahead and force them to mix. I'll take the jar, stir it on up, and even then, it's still going to separate out in its two layers. In fact, upon closer inspection, I can see that the salt is gone. The salt has mixed, since it's polar, with the other polar substances of water and vinegar. Next, we'll move on to the lab. I have seven test tubes set up and seven markers. Some of these markers are Sharpies, which we consider to be permanent, and some are called Crazy Art Markers, which are Walmart's version of washable markers. Next, I'll put about an inch worth of water in the bottom of each one of the test tubes. Now I have strips of paper that I will place a marker dot upon and slide into the test tube. I'm not pushing it down into the water yet. That's what I want you to do. I want you to predict what will happen when I push that down into the water. Now I can tell you that there's a process known as capillary action which will cause the water to wick up the paper and go past the dot. So that's the question. Once it wicks past the dot, what will happen to that dot for each one of the markers? And now the race is on. I will push each paper down into the water and witness what takes place. Next, we'll do the exact same experiment with the same markers in the same order, but now these test tubes contain acetone. Acetone is also fingernail polish remover. Now, this is a complex substance. Uh, for the sake of this experiment, we are going to call this a nonpolar substance. We'll talk more about that later, but for right now, let's just consider it nonpolar. So as the acetone begins to move past the dots, let's take a look to see what they do. It's interesting to note that some of these substances are moving very well with acetone and maybe they didn't move at all with water. Some of the substances moved great with water and not at all with acetone. And some of the substances moved a little bit with both. Take a look at the picture. Feel free to pause it to write down your data, how each marker behaved in the two substances, acetone or water. Let's get back to that situation I said was a little complex. Technically, acetone is both nonpolar and polar. It exhibits properties of both because of the way its molecule is structured. So I'm going to take canola oil on the left, and I'm going to put water on the right test tube. And let's go ahead and add some acetone to each one of them to see how they behave. As I add the acetone to the oil, at first you can definitely see there is a layer that's in there, but as I shake it up, they mix and they dissolve. Like has dissolved like, although it is a little hazy. 
and looking at the acetone mixed with the water, they appear to have mixed well. Again, like dissolves like. We definitely like black and white answers in science, but the acetone being both polar and nonpolar makes things a little gray. So of course the question is, what about if I mix these two solutions together? What will happen then? And as you see, it looks very similar to what happened at the beginning of the lab. They do form two separate layers, but they definitely are not as clearly defined as they were before. The acetone and its dual properties has something to do with that. In closing, let me take my non-polar, permanent, sharpie marker and write down that phrase that we need to remember, like dissolves like. And if you try to get rid of that with a paper towel and some water that's polar, it's not going to touch it. But don't forget, you could just take an Expo marker, one of your dry erase markers, which also contains a non-polar solvent, and write over top of it. Both are non-polar, like dissolves like, and they're gone.